the very wise can assume ends. My heart tells me that Gollum has some part to play yet, for good or ill, before this is over. Gandalf does seem to have some powers of prophecy, and to anyone who has read The Lord of the Rings or even just seen it, then they know precisely what this moment with Gandalf and Frodo is referring to. Gollum, it turns out, actually helps destroy the ring, even if that wasn't his intention. But the powers of prophecy don't just come from the vague array of magical skills that Gandalf seems to have. They come from a specific part of his backstory as a character, as a wizard. The actual quote in the book in this moment is very similar. For even the wise cannot see all ends. I have not much hope that Gollum can be cured before he dies, but there is a chance of it, and he is bound up with the fate of the ring. My heart tells me that he has some part to play yet, for good or for ill, before the end." See, a lot of Tolkien fans will know that Gandalf isn't just an old man with a staff who can do wizardy things like light bulbs and fireworks and facing down against ancient demons of darkness. He is one of the Maya, sort of like an angel in the divine hierarchy of Middle-earth. There were other spirits whose being also began before the world, of the same order as the Valar but of less degree. These are the Maya servants and helpers. And as one of these Maya, Gandalf was present during the creation of Arda, otherwise known as the music of the Ainur, or the Ainu Lindale, which I tried to pronounce correctly. Iluvatar called together all the Ainur and declared to them a mighty theme, unfolding to them things greater and more wonderful than he had yet revealed. For all shall then understand fully his intent on their part, and each shall know the comprehension of each. And he showed them a vision, Erid, they saw a new world made visible before them. And as they looked and wondered, this world began to unfold its history, and it seemed to them that it lived and grew. Because of the memory of his words and the knowledge that each of them has of the music that he himself made, the Ainur knew much of what was, and is, and is to come. And few things are unseen by them. The beginning of the Silmarillion, this passage here, is one of those parts of Tolkien's work where everyone goes, Ah, yes, <laughs> that's beautiful poetry. I have no idea what it means. But what it's essentially saying is that Gandalf is one of these spirits, these Ainur, who saw the history, the present, and the future play out before him during the music. As spirits in the incorporeal realm, they existed outside of time. They could see all of history and the future and the present at once. They could see Eru Iluvatar's plan for the timeline of Middle-earth. So it's not surprising that in his journeys throughout Middle-earth, Gandalf could foresee some things to come, such that Gollum would play a role in the destruction of the Ring. In a sense, he had seen it all play out beforehand. Though I will point out that the Valar and the Maya did not see everything that was going to play out in Middle-earth. Not everything was laid out before them. Yet some things there are that they cannot see, neither alone nor taking counsel together, for to none but himself has Iluvatar revealed all that he has in store. And in every age there come forth things that are new and have no foretelling, for they do not proceed from the past. This is why Gandalf was surprised when an ancient demon of darkness Balrog turned up in Moria, or he didn't know where the One Ring was when he arrived in Middle-earth. Hey Bilbo, this is a really nice ring, where did you get it? It, uh, just seems familiar for a reason, I can't quite, uh... Oh. If Gandalf did know about some things to come in Middle-earth from his participation in the music, then why does he only feel that Gollum has a part to play in the future, rather than knowing it for sure if he'd seen it play out? He doesn't know anything about the future of Middle-earth, he just has these vague feelings. Well, in the year 1000 of the Third Age, Oleron, as he was known then, took on mortal and somewhat permanent physical form and departed for Middle-earth, as Gandalf, and it's that moment that concerns us. To protect and guide Middle-earth, the Valar sent the five Astari, who each took on physical form as the five wizards. But in doing so, they lost the capacity to remember or understand what they saw in the music. After all, these spirits existed outside of time, in the incorporeal realm when they saw the past, present, and future of Middle-earth. It's vastly different to living in a linear, mortal form. A mortal living in linear time simply cannot comprehend that, so it'd be impossible for them to articulate. Tolkien actually explains this pretty explicitly in Unfinished Tales. 
For it is said indeed that being embodied, the Astari had needs to learn much anew by slow experience. And though they knew whence they came from, the memory of the Blessed Realm was to them a vision from afar off. Things that had once been memories to them had become visions that needed to be interpreted. Words of prophecies that could be misunderstood, that they couldn't know for certain. They could only feel things in their heart that needed to be, as they learned just like mortals did. And Gandalf's prophecy about Gollum isn't the only time that he has felt in his heart that something must come to pass in order for a plan to succeed. I knew in my heart that Bilbo must go with him, or the whole quest would be a failure. Or, as I should say now, the far more important events, by the way, would not come to pass. The far more important events, by the way, as in happening during the quest to Erebor, being that Bilbo gets the ring from Gollum, and he also considers it fate that the ring came to Frodo. From his memories of the music, Gandalf can recall that certain important events must come to pass, or that certain important individuals, like Frodo or Bilbo, must be involved for Eru Iluvatar's plan to come to fruition. In this case, most of Gandalf's prophecies seem to be around the fate of the One Ring, that Bilbo must go on the Erebor quest in order to acquire it from Smeagol, that Frodo must go on the Ring quest in order to destroy it, and Gollum must not die so that he could be there at Mount Doom. And we can see that this passage from disembodied to bodied, from out of time to into time, damages the memory of whoever undergoes that passage in Gandalf's return in the Two Towers. Gandalf. Gandalf. Yes, that was what they used to call me. Gandalf the Grey. That was my name. Gandalf. Gandalf, the old man repeated, as if recalling from old memory a long disused word. Yes, that was the name. I was Gandalf. I had forgotten much of what I thought I knew, and learned again much I had forgotten. I can see many things far off, but many things that are close at hand I cannot see. He had forgotten his name in the passage, as well as a lot of what had happened in the Fellowship of the Ring. And after he defeated the Balrog atop the pinnacle of the Silvertine, it's noted that he strayed out of thought and time, and I wandered far on roads that I would not tell. Bound by the limits of time, he had forgotten much of himself, and when he was unbound by it, he seemed to have remembered a lot more. We can also see one time how Saruman recalls something from the music, but only as a foretelling. But do not expect me to wish you health and long life. You will have neither, but it is not my doing, I merely foretell." The Astari are able to prophesy in the sense that they can recall what they saw during the music of the Ainur, seeing the history and the future of Eru's plan for Middle-earth play out before them. However, in their mortal form, it's impossible for them to truly articulate and comprehend everything they had seen in their immortal forms, so it becomes a vague memory that they can call upon. It's all part of how wizards do things, and speaking of wizards doing things, I have new merch with this amazing piece of artwork featuring a wizard did it! Because wizards do magical things and you do too and now you can show it off, there's a link to the store down below if you want to get it. I haven't really got much merch but I've had lots and lots of requests for this in particular so I hired an artist and got this put together and I absolutely love it. You can get it in whatever color and size. You can get it on pillows and, and like mugs. You can tattoo it on your girlfriend's forehead for all I care. Just go to the store, check it out. And if you get one, I'd love to see a pic of you wearing it over at Twitter or email me at hellofutureme.yt at gmail.com. In the meantime, come follow me over on all my social media, like my Twitter, because that's where I tend to talk the most. Uh, otherwise, stay nerdy and I will see you in the future.